Well, welcome to our Inspiring Thoughts podcast today. We're really, really lucky to have Nikki here, Director of Conduct Change and a specialist in workplace bullying. Uh, Nikki, great to have you on board. Brilliant to be here, Stephen. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, really good. Really good. And uh, we're starting on a Monday, which is a good start to the week for me. I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, I always love a chat with you, Stephen. So this is just a perfect way to start the week. Lovely. I'll send you the money in the post, Nikki, for that comment. I'll send you the <laughs> money you, for that. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, before, so um, like with all our guests on the show, they have seven questions sent to them in advance so they can have time to prep, etc. So we get that real good, rich information from them. But before we start, Nikki, would you just tell our audience what's your kind of career so far? Where have you got to to make you a kind of workplace bullying specialist? Where, where have we got to today? So I started my career in finance. Um, so about the first seven years of my career was in a number of different finance roles. And um, through a number of, oh, you know, companies being sold, moved around, restructured, I ended up deciding to change career. And that's when I started moving into education and training. Yeah. And so worked from, um, you know, the ground up in that career, basically. So uh, administrating, um, managing out centres so that you're actually within the community, um, lecturing, teaching, right up to senior leadership roles across the, the whole spectrum, really. Um, but unfortunately, at one point in my career, I was bullied myself right. and bullied out of one of those senior roles. And what actually part of my recovery was really learning about workplace bullying which led to me setting up the business as it is today so I've been probably self-employed for oh gosh probably working in this particular area for about seven or eight years uh, with the business actually set up just over four years ago yeah Fantastic, isn't it? And it's um, uh, shown that, that really breadth of career as well, understanding different roles, etc. Um, and I really like the point there of um, of how you said you've gone through bullying, but you wanted to learn and understand the process. And I suppose that's the idea of the podcast today, because we hear lots of words about bullying and people use. But today is about really kind of trying to understand it from your expertise, uh, which I'm super excited about, really excited. So our first question as we dive in, what does conduct change mean so it, it might oh, be one of those questions that you go well it's pretty obvious Steve but actually, what's it what does it mean conduct change yeah so for me conduct is about behavior and there's two elements to this so conduct is about you know the manner in which individuals conduct themselves and particularly you know I'm looking at that in the workplace but also we're looking at the way in which an organization is managed and directed so because that obviously influences behaviours and conduct as well. So when I chose the name Conduct Change for my business, it was really um, about how can we help businesses change behaviours so that it actually supports them moving forwards and helps to prevent workplace bullying. And there's a huge amount of overlap with a lot of the culture work that is being done. Uh, but it's when you're getting into bullying um, complaints, bullying and harassment, then it is a little bit more complex and nuanced to understand. Yeah. So that's the reason that I kind of chose the name for my business, because it really reflected the two elements working with the individuals and with the organisations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that was really important to me was that because I'd been through it myself, I wanted to give something back as well. Yeah. So when I set up the business, I decided that the work that I did with businesses would then help support um, a social purpose, which is around yeah. campaigning, awareness raising, education yeah. um, around workplace bullying, yeah. which is why this is just such a fantastic opportunity to share some of that knowledge. Yeah. And that's really um, where we look at the Stop Hurt at Work campaign, which is looking at legislation regarding workplace bullying and um, we're looking at things like the conference and we're looking also at subsidizing moving on programs which helps individuals who have been through this and just need that little bit of extra support to to move on and get their lives and careers back on track again yeah and and, and uh, nikki i think that's really really good point a couple of bits about organizational 
colleagues, individuals, and in social, what other work can be done? And I know there's some great work going on with the the, um, the campaign that you've got going at the moment, and it was some good success. I think was it this year or last year that we started to move through Parliament uh, from that aspect. This year, this year, yes. This year, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get very excited about that shortly. <laughs> yeah. So, we, so actually, you can see that you truly, truly believe um, and a passion that it's not just a work related it, that social element really comes through loud and clear it's really really important yeah and what's really interesting is that when we look at the impact of bullying and um yes it's a social purpose but actually it's that social need for belonging yeah and the isolation that bullying can cause yeah. that can do the most damage to individuals yeah so actually in both senses it's incredibly important in this yeah. context yeah no spot on absolutely spot on. and i know from working with you as well that the passion that comes through to really help colleagues and and even like with myself i've experienced uh, bullying over the years uh, and that and it is a lonely horrible place to be you question yourself mm. doubt etc whereas having someone to talk to or just kind of rationalize it as well is super yeah. super important isn't it yeah that education that understanding what's going on yeah. Um, being able to make sense of it is yeah. such an important part of the process because the sooner we can make sense and do something about it that early intervention the yeah. faster it gets resolved and the less yes. damage is done yeah yeah no so, but it's, it's one of those ones that um uh, it just goes through my head of uh, the phrase we were all taught at schools and it sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me mm. that's a lie isn't it let's be honest it come is. on so, so if you think about now <laughs> names and words and for, it really can hurt people uh for absolutely that aspect. Yeah. yeah yeah words can be cutting and actually yeah. it's not even words sometimes it's just those small behaviors um yeah. or that blocking people or the isolating cutting them out there yeah. are so many things that can really really hurt other people and i think particularly in um uh, this time of um social media working online yeah. as well you know it travels across multiple yeah. mediums now doesn't it so yeah. and I, for me i always say that with bullying anything that can happen in the room can pretty much translate online unless it involves physical contact yes yeah 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 so, yeah, yeah. yeah and that leads nicely into the next question is what is bullying so people say to me about bullying and i and you go right let me try and explain it so what is bullying so bullying if you think about bullying as a continuum of behaviors yeah and so that can start from moments of incivility and rudeness um it can be physical behaviors so it could be you know anything from just that slight turning of the shoulder away to block somebody from a conversation the eye yeah. rolling those microaggressions that yeah. we hear about um, right up to if it's physical it can go right up to physical violence yeah. um, verbal as well so that can be anything from um, gossiping whispering about people it can be ignoring people and not talking to them yeah. and then it can go right up to shouting and screaming at people yeah. um, but probably the most um, prevalent area now that we hear about is the psychological aspects yeah and really um, that way of making people feel humiliated and belittled and making them doubt themselves yeah. and the gaslighting where yeah. people are made to believe that their sense of reality is incorrect yeah. and so that's where the real damage comes because actually they're going to withdraw into themselves they're going to not know what's going on it yeah. really is going to affect their mental health yeah. right up to the point of potentially causing trauma and psychiatric injury yeah. so bullying can take a, a huge different number of forms of behaviors and i think the thing to remember is that we can all exhibit bullying behaviors from time to time yeah. but what matters is are we aware of them do we apologize when it's a one-off when we've got something else going on yeah. when our, you know an external stressor is affecting us or is it a pattern of behaviour? Yeah. And unfortunately, what happens in some organisations is that what we see when we enter an organisation is, well, these kind of behaviours get rewarded. Yeah. And therefore, 
I will, I observe that, I learn that even at an unconscious level and I start to adopt them. And that's how bullying behaviors turn into a bullying culture, if you yeah. like. And observation, most of our learning about behavior is through observation. Yeah. So, you know, it's a little bit like, you know, let's have a speak up campaign. You can tell people to speak up, but they don't see anybody doing it. Or yes. they see what happens when people do that and they, you know, they're inevitably the ones more often than not that end up ill or leaving their jobs. Yeah. And so everyone thinks, well, I'm not going to speak up because I don't want that to be me. Yes. So, yeah. so it's the observation of what happens that is much more powerful yeah. than any policy or procedure that we can put yeah. in place. Yeah, and, it, um, and it's. Can I answer the question there? Yeah, you did. Oh, no, that was beautiful. It, that was like if we were listening to Family Fortunes, that was like the top answer. I was just <laughs> going, yes, that that makes sense. That does make sense. And and it's the, the it's the bit about how we receive. But I think I really like that, um, Nikki, that we might exhibit a kind of one off or whatever, but we apologise and we go, Joe, I'm sorry about that. You know, but it's yeah. when it's a continuous process um and yeah. i really love the way that you linked it back into the organization of that we see so many untrained managers that go into managerial mm. roles and then they follow the person before and go well that must be the culture we must follow or adapt etc rather than actually understanding um, and i've just got this big moral belief recently it just kind of hit me of people do know right from wrong I think people do know right from wrong. They don't have to have a training course. They, don't have to, they know whether it's good behaviour or bad behaviour, unless I'm really wrong on that. But that's just my belief in recent times, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think I think we do. I think we all do. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, we if it becomes the norm, if it becomes accepted, yeah. um, but also when it's the norm and it's accepted we our need for belonging yeah it's probably the greatest human need that we have and so what we do is we think well it makes me a little bit uncomfortable but I need to fit in with this group yes and therefore I'm going to adopt those behaviors and as I say we might not even do that at a conscious level yeah, yeah. but we start just moving towards those behaviors until we don't see them anymore yes yes and that becomes the problem when we almost become blind to the problem yeah. Yeah. or we refuse to acknowledge it. So um, I remember when I was setting my business up and everybody kept saying, don't use the word bullying. And, you know, businesses don't like it. And I just said, well, neither do the people on the receiving end yes. of it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I was, you know, a little bit spun in my own way and I carried on. And actually what we're seeing now is that it's coming to the forefront um yeah. you know obviously we've been talking about sexual harassment and racism and, yeah. and all of the sorts of you know different areas like that because we've had the equality act since 2010 yeah we've got all the protected characteristics we've had the me too movement um black lives matter all these kind of things and so people have been talking about harassment and um yeah. you know all the other kind of protected characteristics that go with that for quite some time but bullying has always been a little bit of a gray area yeah and it's been quite subjective and so people say well we can't do anything about it because it's subjective well actually no we need to move away from what was your intent yes and we need to look at what was the impact of yeah. that behavior and you can see that in the definitions of bullying that come through so if you go to ACAS and look at the definition yeah. there it's moved away. It used to have the word intent in there. It's come out now. And it actually says, uh, you know, it's behaviour that could cause physical or emotional harm. Yes. Yeah. So we've seen that shift in the definitions. We've seen that shift in uh, yeah. the way people are talking about it. And we're also seeing regulatory bodies now starting to say, yeah. actually, we're not prepared to put up with this behaviour anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, for the financial sector, for the legal sector, they're starting to look at this. Are you fit and proper yeah. to work in this sector if you are a bully? Yes. So those questions are now starting to come up. They're starting to go into the guidance. Yeah. 
Yeah, which is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely fantastic. Is. And it yeah. is about changing words and that. And also, if you took um, Generation Z, X, Y, they look at organisational culture as one of their key yeah. kind of priorities and going, actually, would I want to go to that culture that's led from a bullying perspective or not? You can't have the chance to voice your opinion or voice your words in a professional way. Yeah. It, it's just got so many other kind of um, benefits to resolve a good culture rather than leaving it festering it's what we've always done isn't it yes yeah and you see so many articles now don't you or people saying well they're just snowflakes you know they're not yes. resilient enough and actually particularly you know when you're talking about you know gen z and and you know that kind of generation coming through they've been brought up in a very very different way a different era we didn't have social media growing up they yes. um, have information thrown at them constantly They've also been brought up in a much more risk averse um, kind of world, if you like, where where we're constantly trying to we're putting rules in, we're trying to keep people safe, um, yes. but it yeah. can sometimes go a little bit too far. And then you throw in the pandemic on top, yeah. and you think, well, actually, there's a huge amount of change and um, information there that can really unsettle people. Yes. But one of the really important things is they're the ones that say, well, that we'll speak up and they're yeah. getting punched for it and they're getting called snowflakes where actually they're saying, we don't want this. Yeah. And instead of people further up who've gone, well, it was good enough for me, you know, yes. suck it up and get on with it. Yeah. Start listening. Start listening yes. to the fact that actually, you know, there's always been intergenerational dif- differences. Of yes. course there has. Of course yeah. there has. But start listening to actually we don't want to work this way. We don't think it's healthy to yeah. work ridiculously long hours. We don't think it's a good idea to feel belittled and humiliated yes. and shouted at in the workplace. Yeah. We're actually not appreciating that. And so we're yeah. not going to work for you. Yeah. There's a really clear message there. Yes. To be heard. Yeah. Definitely. And and I think that that clear message. So if we kind of um, look now, so with kind of the cost of bullying, etc., you know, what what does that affect the UK economy each year, or how does that look? Because it's okay to talk about it, but then you, people go, okay, so it sounds nice, Nikki. We've got you know yeah. organisation, but what's the cost to organisations? Yeah, and, and you picked up a really important point there. You know, we've talked about kind of the moral objective of, of yeah. doing the right thing, but actually, there's a real competitive advantage because. Mm. Um, conflict in the UK is costing businesses 28.5 billion a year. Yeah. Uh, so that's just over a thousand pounds per employee. And if we look at that in terms of how that breaks down, if people are encouraged to understand the behaviours and make sense of what's happening really early on and try and find those really early resolutions, yeah. those human conversations those one-to-one human conversations that's what we're talking about here then out of that 28.5 billion you may be looking at a quarter of a billion so it's a tiny amount that it really costs to really resolve things early on help people make sense of what's going on help people have those conversations if they're not able to just do it for themselves once we go into and one of the things we do in um these situations is we tend to push people towards formal processes yes you know it's oh you've got a bullying complaint we'll put a grievance in don't go there that's the worst thing you can do because actually the cost of formal procedures um within the research that was done and it was commissioned by acas uh and what they actually found was that the cost of formal procedures when you think about you know the individuals who are involved the management time everything like that 12.8 billion yeah now the actual cost of the legal processes and litigation is actually quite lower 0.77 billion and that's primarily because very few people get that far yes. because they're either too ill or they you know been treated so badly that they did leave but by far the biggest element of cost is all about the cost of resignation, um, absences, yeah. presenteeism, 
not just from the individuals involved, but from the ripple effect on the teams mm. around them as well. And that actually comes out at 14.7 billion. That's a huge amount yeah. of money. And I don't think people really take on board the ripple effect of bullying cases. Uh, you know, they talk about, well, they should be kept confidential. But there are, there's gossip, there's rumours, there's yeah. the people who are brought into it. Um, it all impacts on the way in which an organisation runs, yeah. how people feel within that organisation, whether they feel safe, absolutely links to psychological safety. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it's costing you a fortune. Yeah. And that's not just within that sector as well, but um, in that sense, but actually in terms of any businesses that have shareholders what they're finding is that shareholders now are if you if you look at the environmental social and governance agenda the social agenda is now looking at how you treat your people yeah. and they don't want to invest in businesses where there are claims of bullying and harassment yeah. and actually there was another piece of research done that showed that shareholders who invested in if they'd invested in particular businesses where um claims were made then they would have lost um you know their investment would have gone down by 20 percent as opposed to gaining by 150 percent if they went into um businesses which had a good reputation for the way they treated yeah. their staff yeah. So, you know, it, it has a much bigger impact than the yeah. two people that we tend to think about yeah. in this situation. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I was just smiling in a very nice way then of, um, and you know, the work that we do around changing people's policies and modernising policies to make it fairer, more inclusive, etc. Um, and the bit for today is I think we've got the heart and the mind connecting of actually, um, I get to work with a load of organisations that go, we see the benefits, Steve, of changing or doing things differently, but they're not convincing their CFO or COO or CEO. Whereas taking the, the heart and the commercial sense, people then go, do you know what, we get it. We yeah. get both sides of the story rather than the heart saying that this is a problem, let's talk about it. And the C CFO or COO go, okay, but commercially, what difference does that make? Yeah. It, 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 we just knitted it together perfectly. There is, I mean, you, you, it's a no-brainer, isn't it, Nikki? Let's be honest. It, it is, isn't it? You know, if you're talking to somebody and they've got 200 employees, you've immediately got £200,000 a year. What would they like to do with that money? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's when you can put it that simply in a calculation, obviously it isn't that straightforward. But yeah. in terms of just getting that initial interest that's um it's a quick way of doing it and absolutely they should be looking at this in yeah. terms of the competitive advantage as well yeah and I, and I think the other bit the other cost which we haven't talked about is then the productivity I know you said presenteeism but then the productivity yeah. on the back of that um and the other part as well is people just think when there's a bullying issue or harassment or a grievance etc it's just those two people it's not it's everybody around that yeah. gets involved they feel the impact they know what's going on then we get allies gossip it just grows arms and legs and then people are not being productive on what they're supposed to be paid for isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely and and that gets forgotten so much yeah yeah, yeah. definitely and what can um colleagues do if they're being bullied so what can they do nikki or so, where can they get help or etc yeah yeah I mean there's there's a huge amount out there we have a, a resources page on our yeah. website um but there's, there's a huge amount of information out there now about the kind of the different types of bullying behavior so so the first thing is um th there's kind of two elements isn't there? there's that self-reflective piece about oh you know what was my role in this yeah. um am I Am I taking something to heart because um, I might have had a bad experience previously or something like yeah. that? But also looking at the behaviours objectively, are, are they bullying behaviours or was this a one off incident? Yeah. Was this something different? Was that out of norm, out of, you know, out of character for that person? Um, is it something that you can go back and have another conversation about and say, actually, you know, that that didn't go too well? Um, I felt really uncomfortable leaving that. Can we try having that conversation again? Yeah. Um, it, you didn't seem like yourself. 
it yeah. could be that you can have that conversation. But the first element is always to try and make sense of what is happening. And so yeah. part of that is about reflection on yourself and your own behaviours. Part of it is about looking at the behaviours. Are they actually bullying behaviours? Yeah. Um, what they will tell you is, you know, start to document this. All of that, when you start to document, is basically saying, I'm documenting this because I want to put a legal case forward. That's yeah. a sense of where that route comes from. Actually, can you have a human conversation? Can you actually sit down with that person and have a conversation? Or can you get somebody else to come in and facilitate a conversation yeah. just to prevent it escalating? And the sooner you can do that, the better. Now, it may be that actually this behaviour continues and you do start to notice it more and more often and you might need to write things down. Um, but, you know, in that case, make sure that it's there's two elements here. There's the um, what actually happened. So the actual facts, where you were, what was done or said, um, were there any witnesses there? Did anybody else see or hear what was going on? But then the impact. So the impact, how do you feel at that time and how do you continue to feel? Yeah. Um, and so even actually if we get to the informal complaint stage, if you get the right support at that stage, you can still bring it back. You can still repair those relationships. Yeah. There's still that possibility. What I would say is try and do that as soon as possible. The other element of this is, you know, your health has to come first. Yeah. So if this is impacting on your health, then take note, get support, go to your GP, um, get you know therapy as well if you think that will help you. It might be that you have an employee assistance program that will yeah. allow you to access that as well. Um, but don't don't let it go on. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we don't really recognise that this is happening to us until it's been going on for a while as well. So the big thing for me is trying to avoid formal processes. Don't be afraid to walk away. If you can get another job and leave and find an organisation that better suits your values, yeah. then do so. If you can speak up, if, you, if it feels safe to speak up, yeah. and that's the key thing, then do so. Um, if you go to formal processes, what we have found, and we've done some we data, oh, let me try that again, we yeah. are partners with the Speak Out Revolution on our Stop Hurt at Work campaign. And they've done some research that shows that when people go into formal processes, um, they're more likely to have their mental health and their physical health damaged. And from memory, I think mental health was about 73% saw a reduction in their mental health wow. as a result of going into formal processes. And 50% saw a, a, a drop in their physical health and well-being as well. Yeah. So really be aware of that, both as an individual and an organisation, that those formal processes are incredibly damaging. Yes. And we don't want to go there unless we can possibly um, help it. Yeah. If that is the only route open to you, if you do decide to go through that, then your health, your well-being yeah. is incredibly important to take care of all the way through that. Get yourself an incredibly good support network. If people at work move away from you, don't take it personally. That's about self-preservation. It's about yeah. keeping their jobs, keeping the roof over their head, paying their mortgage, paying their bills. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's not about you. That's about self-preservation. And so really recognise that in the process as well. Yeah. Uh, and do you know what, Nikki, you, you just articulated that beautifully then. Uh, and I was just sitting there thinking, first of all, that good self-reflection. I think it's super, super important because it could be you may have done something or may have triggered or kind of from that. But also just to think about from that perspective, trying to resolve it early, because we know that that early resolution. Kind of part that it could be done and dusted within a week or two, whereas if you go that formal process, then what happens is it gathers arms and legs and it actually starts eating away more and more. And then we're gathering more evidence to prove beyond reasonable doubt 
that actually so then we're spending more and more time and it's eating away at us in a horrible kind of fashion um, and i also like the bit there of we do have the right to leave so if there's an organization and i've been there that if the values don't match then it's time to leave have have the that kind of spirit to go do you know what that's not going to cross my morals or values anymore it's time to move on um, and that's hard to do because then people do move away from you the self-preservation etc but at the end of the day you go no that, that's my morals and that's how I'd like to lead uh, and it's yeah. incredibly enriching and therapeutic to do that um, but I think you've just articulated all different sides of that as well and how people behave if they do go away from you it is that self-preservation part rather than them siding in with the organisation if that makes sense. Yeah yeah absolutely and um, you know when we talk about being able to leave you know sometimes that's really hard to do because your confidence will have been knocked your self-esteem yeah. will have been knocked but that's why if you can start to recognize it the earlier you can recognize it and be able to make decisions the better yeah. Yeah. the longer it goes on for the greater the chance of trauma yes and you know that affects us physically psychologically it affects our cognitive functions our ability to um remember things to focus to concentrate yeah. um that that impact on memory then means that we look like we are performing badly as well yes. which is why so many of these get turned into a performance issue correct yes yeah, yeah. and yeah. and it's right it's not a performance issue yeah. it's about what's gone before so yes. yeah yeah because what the organization or that pick up then i go well the performance has gone down that's easier to manage isn't it because yes. i can see the numbers i can see the yes. data whereas that behavior before you know can't really whereas actually you can you can see it and you know when i said earlier people can see wrong from right leaders we need to help say that you can see these behaviors we need to if we can nip them in the bud early enough that is beautiful for everybody all round. but yeah. i think you've just that showed today you know the positives of doing that it, it kind yeah. of goes Absolutely. hand in hand Absolutely. And, you know, one of my pet hates is when people say, well, they're oversensitive. No, actually, when you are going towards trauma, what you actually become is hypersensitive, which is yes. a symptom and hypervigilant. Yes. So when they say, well, they're now seeing everything, they're perceiving everything to be bullying. Of course they are. They're on a constant state yes. of high alert, that stress, high alert, yeah. um, fight or flight even yeah. a freeze response you know they are absolutely looking for danger in every corner yeah. because they're frightened they are yes. afraid they feel unsafe yeah yeah they are not being oversensitive they are actually trying to yeah. preserve their life yeah and that sounds really dramatic but actually when we look at some of the research then yeah it's yeah really important well you just imagine that cortisol going through that person's body that stress drug setting off the mm -hmm. amygdala, amygdala it's constantly heightened isn't it and it's yeah. looking for every bit and it could be stuff that's there or not there but they, they, i'm trying to look for it to kind of reassure me or you know that um i'm in control but that fight flight freeze fall etc takes over yes. so yes. i just think that's another way of rather than saying you're oversensitive because that's going to then trigger the person even more isn't it more cortisol oh, is going to rush through your body going yeah. oh, my, oh no i'm oversensitive now yeah what, what else yeah. is there isn't it oh you're not resilient enough well of course i'm yeah. not resilient enough my resilience was great before this started yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 So, oh, beautiful. Yeah. So I'm just going to turn around because I've got I wrote this question down. And I want to make sure I get this right. So what rights do employees have regard to workplace bullying? So it's, it's, it's just kind of to open up there. And I know you're not a HR specialist and I'm not a HR specialist, but I just think it's a good question. Just say what, what's available or what rights do people have? Yes. Yeah, so most organisations will have some sort of um, anti-bullying policy these days. Um, but actually, in terms of when we go right back to legal rights, then if it's harassment, so it's linked to age, race, disability, um, sex, um, gender reassignment, there are some more that I can never remember the whole list off the top of my head, but there are nine protective characteristics. Yeah. And anything that um, where you, there is a link to the protective characteristics in terms of the way somebody is being treated is covered under the Equality Act. And you are covered from recruitment stage. 
Uh, so you're covered from day one in the organisation. If you want to bring a claim, you can bring a claim forward to an employment tribunal and you don't have to leave your job. When we look at bullying, and I use that in the sense of non-discriminatory bullying, so yeah. not linked to any of the protected characteristics, then at the moment there is no legal definition. Yeah, yeah. You have to be in your place of employment for at least two years yeah. before you get any protection. And actually, if you want to bring a claim, what you have to do is you have to resign and bring a constructive dismissal yes. claim or something of that nature. And the other option that is available to you is that um, things are so bad that you have a psychiatric injury and therefore you can go through the civil courts on a personal injury claim which is a route yeah. that is it's hard to bring a case but it's also a route that is not well known yeah. for people who are in these situations as well yeah. Yeah. so it's actually quite limited in terms of your rights if you're quite early in your career yeah once you pass those two years yes you've still got rights but you have to resign to bring that claim yes so it is a you know it's a really poor situation and yeah. that's where some of the work that we've done around the stop hurt at work campaign comes in because recognizing there was a gap in the law um we brought together legal experts who basically put together a proposal which then we took forward to rachel maskell mp and that proposal formed the basis of the bullying and respect at work bill although what rachel has also done is extend that further to say that actually there um, should be a code, a respect code for businesses yeah. in terms of behaviours and businesses, and also um, an accountability route for yeah. organisations as well. So if there are multiple cases attached to that organisation, then a body can go in yeah. and actually hold them to account. Yeah. So that is it's a huge step forward and that was actually brought into the House of Commons on the 11th of July this year 23 and so that was a very exciting and emotional day yes. to say the least. Yeah. Uh, still a long long way to go you know bringing a bill yeah. forward and getting it enacted into law is um, a hugely yeah. different process but uh, basically that that work is continuing in the background so more and more work being done on the drafting of the bill getting the wording correct taking it forward um you know we'll have to take it forward into the next session of parliament and and, and just keep working but what it has done is it's it's raised awareness um it's actually got people talking about this again and there's been quite a positive response actually yeah. i've seen very little in terms of negative responses now absolutely one of the key arguments is legislation doesn't prevent anything no it doesn't legislation is only part of the solution yeah. and it just provides consequences and it fills that gap. So what we're not looking to do is overlap with any existing legislation. It's just filling the gap that exists. Yes. Uh, yeah. But what's really important is that it provides consequences. And it would mean that people would have protection from day one and could stay in their job and bring a case. Yeah. So exactly the same as a harassment. Um, yeah. So you've got that equity. Yeah. And I, they're also looking at you know being able to claim um, for injury to feeling which you can do for a harassment case, but not for a constructive dismissal claim, yeah. for example. So, um, so yeah, it's just about getting that equity in the employment tribunals, but also having that extra level of accountability for organisations yeah. as well. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's lovely there, Nikki, as well, was about that bridging of the gap, because it, it, me as just a, a lay person goes, that does not make common sense, that we've got something missing that we talk about, yeah. However, harassment has the rights built in with it. The first two years, a lot of employees go, do you know what? First two years, you haven't got any rights around that. That's fine. They're going to go, etc. But that's not fair on the individual not to have equal rights. And I really love today mm -hmm. talking to you is you're not ramming bullying down my throat. 
you're just talking it really fairly, really trying to bridge gaps, trying to fill holes where there's missing bits, which I think everyone listening today will go, do you know what, that that makes common sense. Come on, let's get behind this and put some good stuff in place because you're not trying to get asked for things that are not there, if that makes sense. It's just that they're not there. Come on, we need to bridge the gaps. Absolutely, yeah. And a lot of this is common sense. It absolutely yeah. is. Um, and I think I'm just, I'm just fortunate that I've you know, managed to create this huge network of individuals who are also really passionate about this subject as well. And we share that knowledge and, and understanding. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that I found really, really early on, um, you know, when you go through bullying yourself, then you tend to hold on to a lot of anger and a sense yeah. of injustice. And something I learned really early on when I decided to go into this work was you can't change anything from a place of anger. Yes. And actually being able to sit down and look at it, to talk to legal experts, to talk to psychologists, um, neuroscientists, really understand what's going on is I'm I'm really fortunate. I have just the most amazing job with all these incredible people sharing this knowledge. So, Yeah. 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 And you can see on your face and that it just it just yeah. beams from yeah. that perspective. So yeah. um, for 2023 going into 2024, what would you say is kind of the personal development you're working on or for yourself, Nikki? So there are um, oh, there's so many different things. Well, I've got the legislation side, which is yeah. absolutely fascinating in terms of um, learning about how legislation is created yes. and, and taking that through, which is a fascinating journey. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work with um, neuroscientists. Uh, we've got our uh, fairly new trauma informed programme as well, which uh, is being delivered by myself and Pat Ferris from Canada. And uh, so that, again, constantly learning the yes. neuroscience and the neurobiology of um, workplace bullying. So that's always really fascinating. Um, and also learning, you know, working with different sectors as well. Yeah. So at the conference, we saw, you know, people from the film and TV industry, yeah. from the legal sector. Um, there's whistleblowing. I, I do I have a plan? No, I just absorb this amazing knowledge and I keep going. And yeah. it's it's just incredible. And I, yeah. I absolutely love it. So yeah. uh, that does not sound like a nice, neat plan, doesn't it? But I just I never stop learning in this area. Yeah. And there are yeah. always more people to learn from yeah. and have these amazing conversations with. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just beaming there. I'm smiling as well because it's just a constant learn, isn't it? It doesn't matter what industry you work in or that, but if you're willing to learn, open minded, be curious, work with people that are better than you to go, come on, look, I need to understand this and work with it. But I can see you there just beaming of, oh, I've got so much richness to learn this year and next year onwards that yeah. it's kind of never ending, but you're there to do something really good for people, which is amazing. And Nikki, how can people reach out or contact you? What's the best way for to look at conduct change and get hold of Nikki Air? What's the best way? So the website obviously has all the information. Um, it talks about our consultancy work, our training and coaching that we offer. And so that is conductchange.co.uk. And then if they want to um, message me as well then LinkedIn is always a great place to find me so we have um, I have my own page on there we have a conduct change page and if they're interested in all the um, campaigning and legislation then do follow the stop hurt at work page okay. as well but those are the best places so LinkedIn or conductchange.co.uk yeah no, fantastic. And I strongly recommend contact with Nikki, reach out to Nikki. It's such a wealth of ideas and experience. And Nikki and I have worked on jobs before, which I've loved, absolutely really enjoyed. And we've learned from each other, which has been wonderful. Um, so, Nikki, can I just say a huge thank you today for coming on? Um, I think you've really educated me uh, from a bullying perspective. So I've, I've taken a lot today. So thank you for that. So I'm being greedy for that as aspect. Um, but can I just say thank you very much for joining today? Really, really appreciate it. Um, and I know this will go out after the conference but um, I'm sure the conference is going to be brilliant so we'll have you back again to talk about the conference as well but just thank you so much for joining today really really appreciate it. Thank you it's been amazing chatting with you and uh, yeah it just it lo it's lovely to have these conversations and refire my enthusiasm each day and week so thank you. 
no you're very welcome and it's great for a monday isn't it to get, yeah. get this going i know this will go out on a friday but it's great for a monday to get us going yeah isn't it? yeah it is it's brilliant yes thank you thank you nikki <laughs>